Worst Internet Gun Fails, number two, the Darwin Awards by Brandon Herrera. No more. Is everybody all right? Is everybody all right? It do, but, buddy, it doesn't look like you're all right. Uh uh. Bring the other gun out. Oh no! What is up, you? America. Uh, this video is, if you try to go to the original video, I will say it is age gated. We're going to see, I most likely will have to age gate this as well, just as a heads up. You sexy YouTube mother lovers. Yeah, I know. I don't look homeless anymore. As we've said before on the channel, guns are awesome. Yeah. Idiots are not. Nah. When the two intersect, uh, bad stuff tends to happen, occasionally resulting in the winner of a Darwin Award. <laughs> Winning a Darwin Award isn't so much good for yourself as much as it is for everybody else that still remains on the planet when you're not here mm. uh, because you've removed yourself from the gene pool. Here's not to say everybody you're about to see is an idiot, just a lot of them. Yeah. Just as a disclaimer, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at a lot of gun fails and gun accidents and things like that from across the internet and really using some kind of dark humor to try to shed some light on what they could have done differently and kind of like as a PSA to avoid these things going forward. Exactly. We're gonna learn how to be safer with firearms and also potentially witness the winner of a Darwin Award. First up, by <laughs> massive request, Tannerite Lawnmower Guy. Oh no. Oh no, this is already gonna go places. All right, let me let me hop over here to this side. This is this is gonna be good. I also want to point out just the absolute meta because this is effectively React content done by Brandon Herrera. Is it not? It is him reacting to funny gun fails and funny gun fail compilations. The absolute just meta ness of this reaction. <laughs> so here we have this gentleman is shooting a lawnmower that apparently he is filled with tannerite. I see this. I see is that that's a zip tie, isn't it? I see that zip tie. I see that zip tie right there. Shooting. I respect it. I definitely don't have my uh my, my flashlight held on by a zip tie. No, sir. A lawnmower that apparently he is filled with tannerite. He's missing a shitload. And so he actually he gets closer, which is great. I think on the back of the box of those, if you don't know, Tannerite is a brand of exploding tar target, like a binary explosive. They're used really? for great dramatic effect when you're shooting things and can be done very safely. I've shot them a bunch and mostly been safe with them. They also mostly. have a label on the back that says you should stay back at least 100 feet or 100 yards. I can't remember. This gentleman is like 30 yards away from a lawnmower filled with God knows how much Tannerite. So. <laughs> Man is about to get architects. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Destiny 2, much like Halo back in the day, Halo 3, Halo Reach, how you get killed by the Guardians, right, in the sandbox and stuff. Uh, in Destiny 2 as, as well, there is a, you are killed by the architects. You are architects. <laughs> I'm trying to architects past tense. But uh, yeah, getting killed by the architects is awful. It's usually if like an enemy, like a phalanx, just pushes you and you're pushed down to the max or, or the geometry, you get physics, right? So you get killed. By, I have gotten killed by the architects so many times. It is absolutely frustrating. Man is about to actually get, get bodied by the architects. Let's see what happens. Oh, God. No, if that's true. I'm assuming that that's dramatic effect, but oh, that's awful. So that was a, that was a good bit of tan right in there. Actually, if you just pause on that frame there where it first goes up, that's more than one pound of tan right. Man actually just. Man actually just like is living like half life, like multiple like Gmod, multiple exploding barrels in like in the in the bumper car. Oh, my God. I guess this is maybe like anywhere probably about five ish pounds like maybe three maybe eight whatever no i'll, I'll say i'll like be 100 yards away i'll use six five to hit that i will not i would not do that this is this is a decent bit of tanner right standing way too close and there's something interesting about lawn mowers um they actually cut grass using <laughs> big ass blade <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, which I'm assuming this gentleman did not remove prior to filling it with a low grade explosive. Nah, so he's this is just Dumai's Wells 2.0. And if you know exactly what I'm talking about, first off, get some relief for your back. Second off, you have also read Robert Jordan up to that point in time. Third, what are your thoughts on Dumai's Wells? Was it a really good narrative like thing that he pulled off? I thought it was kind of neat showing off side in for like the first time in like what was it six books? Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Just wheel of time things. The craziest part 
is the the life juice that is uh, on his buddy's pants right off the bat. That was just a clean. Oh, ah, oh. And I think this life juice. I didn't see anything YouTube. There's nothing that I saw. Guy did there. end up losing his leg, which oh. it sucks. It really does suck. I don't know anything about this guy, and this is just it's just pain. Everybody has moments where they do. It's just pain. It's all good. Dumb shit. That really blows. He's going to have a yeah. reminder of that for the rest of his life. Yes. However, he did end up recovering from his wounds, sands, and appendage, uh, which means he did not win a Darwin Award. No, the, definitely some emotional damage as well as some physical damage. Absolutely. That's not to say that binary explosives are something that should be screwed around with. Uh, our next contestant up here, Mr. FPS Russia, the guy. What an absolute Chad, like the smolder on this man. We all grew up on one of the single most people who inspired me to be a gun tuber. Is it bad that I have zero idea who FPS Russia is? Like Kip, how do you not know? You've seen like whitest kids you know. You saw llamas with hats. You saw like awesome reach by Ego Raptor. You've seen Fred is dead. You've seen annoying orange. You've seen uh oh god whatever there's so many others just that i've seen throughout youtube's history what do you mean you don't know if i mean i've heard of him i've never actually watched him i have no idea who this is <laughs> give me some comments just like nanny down in the description just like what do you mean one of the few times uh he almost himself on video and turned a uh youtube video into a film was Aww. also using binary explosives and this is the video where he almost committed self with a truck door. Maybe a little shrapnel going. Oh, this is gonna be... I like the sight on that, though. Let me know what... If you know what optic that is in the description, be very curious. He is really close. That door just came... It, it, the door, it's, it's coming right for us, South Park style. Now, for anybody who was watching that video for the first time, I'm pretty sure I just heard your... Pucker. That <laughs> truck door was on a mission. So if I recall correctly... It was it was on the same path as like Resident Evil Six, Pierce's arm. How that that thing was thrown by Sea House. Yes, no, it's chaos. Called Sea House. Thrown by Sea House, and it hits Pierce right in the arm. It was that that status, that vibe. Uh, Kyle had actually talked about this on Painkiller already, the podcast that they do, and uh, he had said that normally they they put explosives like binaries when they're shooting at a car in the middle or like hanging from the. Uh, the rear view mirror, but in yeah. this case, it didn't have a rear view mirror, so they tucked it next to the door. Aww. And that is what resulted in our passenger side door rocket manning past him and, hitting and landing God knows where. My yeah. favorite part of this video, though, is his reaction to the camera. Seconds after realizing he came about EA close to getting the big sleep. Yeah. <laughs> that could have gone better. <laughs> Maybe a lot of shrapnel. Well, I really like this rifle, I've got to say. And right back into the spiel like a true professional. Dude just just saw it, looked at it, nodded, acknowledged it, and just moved on. Professional Russian, if you will. Yeah. Alas, no Darwin Award here. He would go on to continue making great YouTube entertainment for the rest of us to enjoy. Well, okay, at least until he remembered line item 11E on a 4473. Or I don't actually know what that is. The government reminded him, anyway. <laughs> F. What a lad, though. Dude's not even wearing fucking eye pro. I know if I was doing shit like that, I'd probably be wearing eye pro. Probably. But I would definitely be wearing a ballistic vest. Yeah. Which leads us to our sponsor, Safe Life. Safe Life Defense makes high quality ballistic vests, plates, all sorts of stuff, and they're a huge supporter of the channel. You may have even seen our video shooting it with a variety of pistol calibers. If you'd like to check out their stuff, we'll go ahead and put a link down in the description and in the pinned comment. They're a big supporter of the channel, so we definitely want to show them some love. Really I mean, it's cool. I've been looking for just a good vest and or I'm so sorry, Brandon, good vest and or like plate carrier. But also, I mean, I'm a civilian, not just not just because I'm a civilian. I have really, I guess, no need of it. I guess I guess technically, right. If I were to start doing firearms content like on another channel or something, right. I guess I can justify it, especially if, you know, I get plates high enough. Like, what not class five the highest, I think? Just get, just go, go, go ham, get the highest plates I can. That way it's just protection. Right. But it's kind of like, like, sure, I have a black Molly vest, right? Because I, well, I have two Molly vests. I have my one that says, I think, US Army on it, which I never wear because I'm not Army. I'm not, I got from, 
uh, army navy i got it from army surplus and i just don't want to kind of open that line so i ended up getting a second one which has uh which is all black and i mean i'll wear that but i'll, I'll take it off outside the range just because one it's idaho realistically i can go into a maverick or fast eddies and a molly vest just fine no one's going to really question it but just in case there's that one person in there that just doesn't understand or just, you know, wants to start something or wants to, you know, just call the cops. Just like, I just take it off. I just, I'll, I will avoid the entirety of that by just taking off the vest. Right. I just, that's how I look at just, you know, minimize any attempt at, con, you know, conflict. Right. So I don't know. I've been looking for a, I guess, good plate carrier, good plate vest. And I, I, I don't know enough about the, uh, don't know about the industry, so this is really good information for me, actually. I really could not find a better video to shout them out on than a Darwin Award video. Yeah. People getting. Yeah. Speaking of people getting. Yeah. Yeah. Check out our next one. This video has been circulating the internet since before YouTube was a thing. I remember seeing this a long time ago, and that is why it is in fucking potato quality. Oh my so this God. gentleman is out here in the desert shooting his bolt action 50 cal at steel. God, that crispy audio quality. I remember when people used to hop on Xbox Live party chat for that. Oh, my God. That is music to my ears. You hear somebody just rah, 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 over the mic and just because like they're like their mic is just in their throat and they just they're talking, but they just don't understand like mic spacing or mic etiquette. Oh, my God. I could go on for an hour on old Xbox Live. Oh, God, it was next level. It was amazing. I miss it. It can never come back. Don't get me wrong. It will never come back. Oh, my God. Was it an experience, though? <laughs> Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, oh, what? Really, indeed. Let's see that again. Wait. Did it deflect? Oh, oh really? Now, this was a ricochet off steel, so that absorbed a lot of energy. Unfortunately, 50 BMG has a lot of energy to spare. Uh -huh. If you're rocking at 17, 18,000 foot pounds of force, uh, even if you cut that into like a third or a quarter, you're still rocking enough energy to really give somebody a bad day. Uh huh. Ooh, oh, really? Wow. Oh, God, that dude is so both lucky and unlucky. If that was like four inches to his right, you'd have fucking noggin soup. I'm not. That's rough. I'm even gonna say this one was really his fault. That one's just really just unlucky. That, at that range, I would not even consider the possibility that you could get a direct. I mean, that's why you angle your steel targets, I guess. But yeah, I guess like that's. Wow. Okay. So when I when I start experimenting thirty out six and above, I need to actually look in target placement and etiquette for larger rounds and ranges. Interesting. Holy shit. Wild. Ah, tactical reload time. <laughs> so here we have another video that is, again, old as dirt. But there's an interesting explanation behind this one. This one's good. So here, our Arab friend is going to start uh, firing from a full auto AK-47. Boom. What? That one's a winner. Did the, did the, did it just, it just blew up. It just... It's just, it's just, it's like if the upper receiver and the lower receiver on an AR platform just split apart. So I've seen this video circulated a lot when the AR versus AK stuff comes up. Uh, as you may imagine, uh, I get a lot of that conversation yeah. <laughs> saying, well, look, AK-47s can just detonate in your hands like this. Well, okay, there's a little bit more, more to the to story that. on this, and it actually has a cool history. But first off, not a Darwin Award winner, because our pal here is just kind of rinse his hands of this Kalashnikov as fast as he can, and yeah. it seems seems like he's okay. Although now he might be a little gun shy. What I believe actually happened Awful. here in this video, and there, of course there's no way to confirm it, but because of the magnitude of this explosion, I think this is actually uh, sabotaged ammunition, which is actually more common than you'd think, specifically by the US in Vietnam as a part of something called Project Eldest Son in order to turn the Viet Cong against their Chinese backers in the Vietnam War, and just kind of in general fuck with their heads, the US made and circulated tons of sabotaged 7.62 by 39 rounds. Mm. Instead of smokeless powder, they'd actually put like a small bit of small of, uh, of high explosive 
in the ammo itself. So the God. purpose of this was to, uh, you know, in, in effect, while the gun was being fired, all, all you need is one tainted round and it just detonates and disables the enemy firearm. That's now, of course, a wild. Of these were just That's absolutely wild. Attributed, but the Makes Vietnam sense. War ended. And so a lot of them are still floating around there. And I think some of them made their way to the Middle East. And I think that's what happened to our very, very unfortunate homie here. I mean, it would make sense logically. I think that this explanation makes a lot of sense and it could hold a lot of water. I don't know how you'd necessarily prove it without, I don't know, maybe some sort of cross-reference between if the shell casing was kept and, you know, any records of it, but that's if any records exist of which uh, rounds were specifically tainted, which I don't think would exist logically because if that came into enemy hands as well, suddenly that's kind of useless. Awful. <laughs> actually awful it's still just rad that's that's a that's that's crazy explosion i'm marking this video for ak abuse <laughs> next up we got a video that again was very very widely suggested last time around so we are definitely going to talk about this this is uh cop shoots himself in the leg and see this is the unloaded gun right here this is an unloaded gun a lot of problems start with an unloaded gun I'm going to be honest. This is why shops just need their shame jars. I've seen the shame jars. Oh, I promise it's unloaded. Shop owner takes it, racks it. All right, I'm putting this in my jar of shame. You have now lost this. This is this is going in the jar of shame. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you show up with like 50 PMG or something. <laughs> or sorry, uh, 50 AE, right? And you're just like, oh my God, you, you lose so much money. Just, just make sure your stuff's empty. Come on now. It's not hard. This is a Glock 40. 50 cent, too short, all of them talk about Glock 40. Okay, I'm the only one in this room professional enough that I know of to carry this Glock 40. I'm the only one. Yeah, he's, he's going to need a second on that one. The irony that it comes after him talking about he's the only one professional in that room. No, is everybody all right? Is everybody all right? It did, but buddy, it doesn't look like you're all right. You're not all right you're gonna need a minute or at least when the adrenaline wears off you're, you're gonna need to lie down for a minute right. he's the only one in this room professional enough to handle no, it. it thank you thank you <laughs> Rare caught that too Whoa. Yeah. Uh, you good on him for wow. calling it correctly though he said first thing he says i i have an ad i had an ad i think he's talking to his partner or something like that uh, which, <laughs> yeah. if he was in the fucking room, I assume he saw. It's just, it's a desk pop. Come on. Yeah, he had an accidental discharge. Uh, no idea why his finger was on the trigger or pulling the trigger. Uh, it doesn't really take that long to clear a firearm, especially maybe he was a nervous presenter. Firearm safety slipped his mind. Not a not a great thing when you're, the thing that you're presenting is a firearm. Yeah. I will say he took that gunshot like a fucking chad though right straight up like what was it it wasn't eisenhower was it teddy roosevelt the one that got that got popped in the middle of a speech and he still gave the speech right just like it was a minor annoyance that that status and I made a mistake. so listen to me god listen to me i've never seen the rest of this yeah. video listen to me see that how the accident happened it can happen to you and you can be blown away okay so guys, never play with guns. See how accidents happen? They happen. Okay, now I'll probably- Dude actually just takes it like a champ and turns it into, wow, this man is next level. This man needs a raise. I've never this guy's so a gun champ. Again. But Brian, so bring that up and go to that, Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> bring the other gun out. Oh no. Okay, whatever props I gave him before for taking that like a hoss, double he goes right into his safety spiel this is why i don't play with gun guys accidents can happen as you can see i've got a very bad arterial bleed and i'm waiting for medical attention but while i'm here either way <laughs> brian should not bring that other gun out he no I, I think that is someone else might have to take over at that point that that is next level like wow he took that shit so well I have half a mind to think that this was set up and he did that on purpose. Like you, like it's your sense of disbelief is just there. Like how? He was so prepared. God, improv 100. 
But this is a great example of one of the basic rules of firearm safety. Treat every gun as if it's loaded. Yes. The, I, you know there's gonna be trouble as soon as it's a firearm fail video and somebody starts saying, this gun is unloaded. It really doesn't take very long to check. Just simple, it doesn't. pull the slide back, see if you can see the casing. It's, it's very easy to check if firearms unloaded because a lot of people just think it's got no magazine. This gun is unloaded. Well, you can still have a round in the chamber, it's, it doesn't take but two seconds to check. That's actually what led to an unfortunate incident in the cosplay community. I think it was back in 2021 or something like that. That was a situation. And it was, in fact, a round was still in the chamber. Check that stuff. Come on now. It's not hard. It's it's not hard. If anything, it looks cooler if you know what you're doing and are confident racking back that slide multiple times. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Even after you checked. It really doesn't take that much mental no. power to, no. to just treat it like it is loaded. Yes. It's just kind of something you have to be conscious of. You know, everybody fucks up every now and then, but the good thing about the rules of firearm safety is you have to fuck up multiple rules at once to have an accident. Yeah. These are extraordinarily safe tools as long as the user knows what they're doing. And I think part of that is like, oh, well, but they still cause accidents and damage and shit. Okay, how many of these are actually people being stupid, right? Come on now. Is it necessarily a safe? Is it necessarily an issue with the implements themselves? Or is it an education and lack of safety issue? I think you have to address that reasonably. I don't think that this is necessarily the hottest take out there. Is it the implement, like saw blades, right? Are saw blades, you know, uh, uh, the circular saw tables, right? Are they are they dangerous? Oh well, they can cut somebody. They can you know cut someone real bad, right? They can hurt, maim, etc. They they can be really damaging. They cut all this plywood, right, and cut all this wood. Yeah, that's why you have an emergency stop. That's why you know what you're doing. You wear your glasses. You be safe about it. Oh, so is that not the same thing? Is it not that you have safety and education backing that and what you know realizing that this has the potential to do harm, right? Just don't be an idiot, right? Observe your safety and everything will be fine. You know, within that like 1% margin, right? Right. But like, I don't know. Weird. I don't know. I guess that might be considered a hot take though. Unfortunately, it's when the people don't follow the basic rules of firearm safety exactly. and they still try to have fun that we have the really bad accidents. So this one I already know is gonna be pretty bad. Man uses AK-47 for celebratory gunfire guests at Pakistani wedding. Oh. Yikes. So in a lot of Arab cultures, uh, kind of seems bizarre, even to the gun toting United States. A lot of <laughs> weddings and other celebrations, uh, people just, you know, shoot machine guns, pistols, whatever in the air. I guess out in the desert, they don't feel like it's a problem where the bullets land. I don't know. Here in the States, we still view that kind of sketchy. In fact, where I was at in New Year's this year, we had some idiot that did that and uh, ended up hitting some, uh, some poor girl in downtown Raleigh. It's just... What comes up must come down. So just be conscious of that. This it does. It, what, yes, exactly. I understand logically it's going to be like, okay, like it's a celebratory in the U.S. if this happened, right? Because there's many, many videos on YouTube of 4th of July, people putting their G17s in the air, pew, 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 right? Oh, it's makeshift fireworks, so to speak, right? Or it's a loud celebratory. I understand that. What happens, though, to the, you're still firing a projectile. It's not hit scan. It doesn't hit the moon, right? <laughs> It's it's gonna propel itself to whatever height or wherever distance it's going, and it's gonna drop like a rock. I mean, I, I God, I don't, I don't, and I can't really speak internationally in regards to certain cultures and stuff. That is for people that are way more educated than me to discuss. What I can discuss is in regards to these people in the U.S. and America, right? That do this for YouTube content. Let's think about this, right? Let's let's, let's take a second, just take a moment of your time, and. Th think before you do it right use those critical thinking skills that you learned in school that kind of thing let's just use that this isn't something you want to do here but anyway over there it's just kind of a part of their culture it's a thing that they do and a lot of times okay while it may not be safe nothing bad happens i mean it's one of those things you're shooting up in the air and whatnot but occasionally you you mix people that aren't following the rules yeah. of firearm safety with trying to have fun or trying to impress people and then you you have an accident like this. For those concerned, this clip does not actually include uh, any of the people getting hit. Right. It is very obvious what happened. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, YouTube and everything like that. If you're yes. seeing this video, congratulations. 
that means the algorithm is working properly. If we actually showed anything too bad here in, in, in this video, this would not be recommended to you. So for the guys- In all fairness, this did get age rated. Like you had to manually click into this. I think there's a couple parts I know I'm gonna have to censor. You'll probably have seen it in post, which the original is still here, which I encourage you to definitely go check out the original because in any sense of you having to age restrict a video, even if it is the right thing to do, it will still be de-incentivized by YouTube. I, I'm just going to come out and say that. As somebody that has a de has had to demonetization and who has had to age restrict videos in the past, it turns into a real crapshoot real quick. Guys who are like trying to watch the original videos and stuff when we blurred things, uh, we have the video, the, the the links down in the description if you're actually uh, curious. But for obvious reasons, yeah, we can't do that here on YouTube. We at least don't want to risk it. Right? So yeah. without further ado, let's see what we got. Oh, damn, was that like a full That's really trip, right? tight. That's really tight. That was a really tight grouping, too. I'm sure, some might land far. That is. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. That went wrong That's real fast. One, uh, there's no safe direction here. It's just. Oh, God. That was bad. The guy limp wristed the hell out of it. So he had looked like just under folder 8K. Yeah. And uh, clearly, I guess, did not anticipate the recoil of 7.62 by 39. Kind of no, he, he didn't accommodate for the recoil of that 7.62, not at all, in any way, shape, or form. And thus, it, it became a situation that was just unwinnable. Slight downward angle, thing just pushed right down a couple yep. shots in, and he was at melon level. Not going to show the rest of the video because it's just a bunch of no. running and screaming around. Mm -hmm. not, not good. No, One not fun. Up in this case, apparently three people at what was supposed to be a celebration. Yep. But even this really example of the Darwin Award because Darwin Awards are supposed to remove the idiot from the gene pool. In this case, he proved that he's an idiot by removing three innocent people from the gene right. pool. So this one really also doesn't work. So not a Darwin Award, just manslaughter. Yeah. So that brings us over to our next contender. You know, so that's something like a PPSH or a Swami, something like that. Some submachine gun. <laughs> no, ooh, no, ooh, no, ooh. no, 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 just gross negligence. See, I, I don't think it's pointed directly at him. Almost. He's sweeping around. He sweeps the camera. If you see right there. So he's pointing a now loaded submachine gun yep. around at everybody around him. So he's already being an asshole. Even still, now that it's loaded, he's not quite confident. So he looks straight at the muzzle. Yep. And pulls the trigger. Step one, load submachine gun. Step two, point submachine gun at face. Step three, Pull trigger. Step four, wall pizza. Some I'm sure that nobody would fault you if there was ever doubt, right? If for some absolute reason you had to pull that trigger to ensure if it was loaded or not loaded, right? We're like, we're, and it, we're at a worst case scenario in this situation, right? You're not confident enough to rack it back or engage any of the charging handles. You needed to make sure with a trigger pull that what you to, to ensure if it was loaded or not loaded or jammed, right? Point it at the ground. Is there not? Let's go back, right? Let's go, let's go back a little bit, shall we? Step one, load Maybe. submachine gun. He looks straight at the now. Is there not some just grass, some soft targets over here? Point it at the ground. Why are you pointing it anywhere than at the ground? If you have to discharge it, point it at the ground. Just don't even deal with it at that point. Then you get, oh, okay, it's loaded, right? You're not pointing it in the air. You're not pointing at anybody else. You're not pointing at yourself. Loaded submachine just, gun oh, God. around at everybody around him. So he's already being an asshole. Exactly. Even still, now that it's loaded, he's not quite confident. So he looks straight at the muzzle and pulls the trigger. Yep. Step one, load submachine gun. Step two, point submachine gun at face. Step three, pull trigger. Step four, Wall pizza. Yeah. Somehow our late friend here was able to fuck up all four basic rules of firearm safety at once. Treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Know your target and what's behind it. Never point a weapon at anything you're willing to destroy. Keep your fingers off the trigger until you are ready to fire. These are really just four basic rules, and it's wild how often they're just disregarded. 
I mean, you can get extra rules. Like, uh, we, uh, for example, the range that I go to, you cannot move a naked firearm back and forth from the bench to the back, right? It must be cased. You must bring a cased firearm from the back bench or from wherever you're bringing it onto the actual bench, onto the actual area, the, the shooting bench itself, and then you may undo, you may actually bring it out and work with it, right? And the amount of people that I've seen that'll just, they have a case like it's not like they don't have a case they'll just you know move a naked firearm from that bench to the back bench and itched every time i just look at them like excuse you what do you like what follow the like it's not hard it won't end up like this guy who is actually our first ever actual winner of a darwin award Awful. and with that i hope you guys found this video entertaining but i also hope that you maybe learn something so that this sort of thing doesn't happen to you and with that, I appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. As always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put his eyes to the top. But the killer should just stop, 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 just stop. Wild. This is wild. What blows me? Oh, can we even talk about on his leg? Maybe don't hey. say blows me away either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, reading texts. Just dumb shit. That's a mood. That was, I know you just like recorded the actual disdain that I have for most of my texts <laughs> right there. Immortalized. Yeah. Do your eyes fit through the those two gaps right there? Safe life. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to probably edit a little bit of this, try and see if I can make it YouTube compliant without having to 18 plus it. We we're going to see how that goes though. So uh what I can say if this is your first interaction with Brandon Herrera, if this is your first interaction here with him, you never heard of him before, do yourself a favor and go check out Brandon Herrera. He is very very into safety, very much someone who is very professional about this and what he does and generally someone that I look to in regards to what a content creator on YouTube that does firearms professionally does do. So if you haven't checked him out, definitely go check him out. I'm not paid or affiliated with him to say this. I just think he's a really neat dude. I think he's a really cool dude. And, uh, you know, want to promote some more uh, positive, really unique and genuine content creators on this platform. What are your thoughts, though? What are your thoughts on uh, how some of this went? Do you think that uh, this truly is just stupidity incarnate with some of these videos? Do you think that... Uh, Really, it comes down to a safe, a, a negligence uh, for safety and a just uneducated perspective on why stuff like this happens. Do you think that there is, uh, you know, I don't even want to open that for discussion. I feel like it's going to get political really quick. I was going to say, I want like, what are your thoughts on just the implement themselves? At the end of the day, it's no different than a, you know, lawnmower, no different than a table saw, no different than a CNC mill, right? It's, it's a tool. Don't be an idiot. Use it correctly. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Remember the four rules. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next ones. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.